morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. So Saturday's brewery tours times two were an absolute success. We had at, at least 24 people in for the first one and then the second one we saw quite a few more. It's difficult to count because they were all spread around this area and filed right in in front of our new tanks. So this is some of the display that we had out. So I let them sample or at least smell like mosaic hops, Golden's hops, eyes and glass to try and put people off using finings in beer. Dirty, dirty stuff, but we do have to use it in some of the beers like the bitter because unfortunately, well, it's market forces. Then you can see all the finger holes in this grain that we had out. This is a grain sample. They love that kind of thing. Um, but unfortunately what didn't happen was we didn't manage to capture a batch of beer. So we did a mash and then we were sparging during the first talk and unfortunately uh, I was busy. We had Froggy here actually who helped me out no end but he's not familiar with this kit and he didn't know what the plan was so while I was talking we just continued to sparge and we ended up collecting 80 litres of wort when in fact we only wanted 55. So that first batch, I decided to tip it down the drain. It would have only given us like a 2% beer and the whole day cost us no more than kind of seven quid in grain, quite frankly. So it's not a huge loss and considering the hands-on approach that all of the um, attendees of the brewery tour got, I think that'll pay back in dividends over the coming weeks with new customers coming into the pub to try the beers because they got to see the process. So for the second round of brewery tours what we decided to do was just mash in again and then take half of that initial work that we collected on the first run and boil it so that on the second tour people could see a, a boil going on and a mash going on at the same time and uh, come over and you know appreciate the aromas and have a real good look at actually what's going on, which uh, Froggy managed really quite well while I was talking to everybody. He was taking questions uh, on the side while the main tour, I was stood up there near the boil kettle and that was all going on over there. So the plan is today anyway, to get the work out of this kettle, get the whole thing cleaned up. I notice we've sprung a little leak here, so that's all dried up actually, but. It looks like that washer has just pinged out of place, that rubber grommet. So we'll sort that out and we'll bear that in mind for the future. And uh, yeah, we'll put some cleaning fluids in this, recirculate it, and then we'll put it to bed until next week when we're going to be using it. But this week, we're going to be filling all these tanks up. So Gemma's just taken delivery. No? No hops. It's not hops. No. Is it the STCs? STCs and silicon hose. Oh, excellent. Well, we've got the silicon hose so we can switch out the hose for the new, for the pilot kit. I'll turn this light on. And we've got STCs for the fermenter controls for the, uh, for the small fermenters. So, yeah, anyway, we don't have the hops, but we've got enough hops in stock, fortunately, to fetch enough ingredients to brew at least three or four batches of beer including this malt which arrived last week as well so uh, that's the plan this week we're going to initially fill four fermenters up and then hopefully the week after we'll fill the other four and then we'll have time to uh, do a few batches on the pilot kit while all these tanks are fermenting Oh, and Chancey really enjoyed his day out yesterday at the beach, didn't you, buddy? He drank gallons of seawater. I think it made him a little bit poorly. Hey, buddy. You plonker. Rodney. So, just a little distraction this morning. Somebody that I know who runs another pub locally uh, has had some compressor issues. And they thought I might be the man who was able to sort it out. So the uh, compressor was running, but there was nothing showing on any of these dials, regulator dials, and it wasn't shutting off. 
So I have a funny feeling that it was just charging up to silly pressure and obviously a potential explosive danger if uh, if the pressure switch can't shut the compressor pump off. Could be nasty. So we had a look inside and uh, just in this little section here, I completely emptied the whole tank before I went in of course, there was this little sintered brass fitting that went in here and I can only assume it was to stop any kind of uh, particles getting through into the pressure switch uh, assembly but as you can see it's completely gunked up with kind of I don't know what would you call that uh, verdigris by the looks of it that's all I can explain it as so we removed this and reassembled uh, did a low pressure test which was positive and then I went ahead and uh, reset all of the instruments so the pressure will come on and off with a very, quite a wide ranging gap of around uh, 4 bar so it will kick in for instance at around 2 bar and it will turn off at around 6 bar that's not a problem we've got air in there there is one other fault on this thing though and that's this regulator so this regulator wants to be set at the inlet pressure so if your inlet pressure is 6 bar then you've got to wind this dial right up to 6 bar otherwise it bleeds out of the bottom bleed valve or bleed hole so I'd suggest that the guy who owns this replaces this uh, Camozzi regulator with a new one because maybe this is all verdigreed up inside as well. I've been in and had a look but I just, uh, well I'm not putting a regulator on it so if he wants to it's up to him. So we've got her working, she turns off, she turns on but the only trouble is you have to ramp this one up to about 6 bar to get anything out which is 2 bar over the dial but the inlet pressure on the regulator will go up to 16 bar so uh, that should be able to handle it. But other than that, the guy can just uh, kind of just plug it back into his system and turn it on. And um, well, power his beer pumps with a Stanwell again instead of using, uh, I think he's using mixed gas cylinders at the minute to do it. So we managed to cobble together a little bit of a fix this morning. And uh, the reason I did it was because. I wanted to see how these Stanwells work because of course they are the industry standard for cellar compressors so uh, we may end up getting one and the reason being is that the duty cycle on these is rapid so they can fill the tank and discharge and then the compressor pump can come back on within 45 seconds so if you've got a high duty cycle this can keep up even though it's a relatively small machine and they're really quiet as well as you can see they've got rubber grommets rubber feet everywhere so there's no vibration transmitted into the surroundings and it keeps it all nice and quiet which is what you want in the pub environment i think so a little digression anyway i'm going to get back to uh oh Gemma's busy I'm waiting to use the hoover. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get back to putting the recipes together for tomorrow's brew day. We did receive some silicon hose and it is the correct stuff. So anybody wanting this, it's just from eBay. The guy's called United Silicones and uh, this was the... Uh, half inch ID stuff, 13 millimetre I think it was 20 something OD uh, but this is the good stuff so we're going to change that out from the old pipe that we put onto the pilot kit so we can get rid of these brown hoses I only cobbled it together with my old homebrew hoses actually because I wanted to obviously run it but now we're going to put some more elbows in various places like maybe here definitely here and uh, really try maybe even here as well try and tighten up the uh, hoses so we don't have 
long dangly bobs hanging about the place. And we've also received some more mosaic hops and Simcoe hops and uh, uh, Gemma's put them in the cold room. And uh, well, they're in there ready to brew with. Aren't they, buddy? Jancy boy. Cats. Ooh. He's going a bit grey, aren't you, fella? Chance. Going grey, bud. So Gemma's now using the small scales to weigh out 15 kilos of grain because these are actually quite shizzle. They're called J Ship 332. They should be J Shit. They are absolutely useless, aren't they? They'll not weigh anything, kind of. Uh, you need to get like a kilo and a half on there before the scales move. Sorry, Jam. And then you have to kind of push it down. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. I'm not even going to bother explaining it. I don't like them, so I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to look. I'm going to look for some better scales that we can use because. Well, I'm just fed up of doing it the long-winded way. We've put the kit away as well, as well as clean up the floor. And we're just recirculating a little bit of acid around the system now to clean out any nasties that happen to end up in there. This, this, and this will be cleaned tomorrow, but I was gonna do the best bitter for the first batch. We don't have any Nottingham Ale yeast, so I might just have to see if we can tally on down to uh, Milestone Brewery and pick some up. We've got a few bits to clean up here. We've still got the other cooling coils to put in those FVs. They need sanitising inside and out first before we drill the holes and put them in. And believe it or not, that's that for the day. We're going to leave the acid in there. We're going to come back and uh, brew tomorrow, but as far as today goes, we're off to get the kids and then we're going to Macro in Sheffield and hopefully a Chinese or Oriental supermarket to buy some spices. What do you think to that? I might take you with me. Well, the plan was, unfortunately, folks, to take you to the Chinese supermarket with us, a macro. Uh, but we forgot to get the camera out. Got some real bargains, though. Look at that, like soy sauce. £1.50 for half a litre. Really cheap. Really, really cheap. And I also got myself, where is it, Jam? Where's my wok? Look at this. Got a beautiful Chinese flat bottomed wok. We're doing some amazing dishes in, folks. So you'll be able to look forward to them. Maybe on another video. Not tonight, though. Not tonight. So, uh, yeah, I'm really tired and I forgot to take you with me. So, never mind. I guess we'll just catch you on the next one. Cheers. Got a right messy boot, hasn't it? You should see Gemma's boot. No, we don't want to see my boot. <laughs>